Well, Skoda has uh, decided to bring its Slavia and we've seen the car earlier and now it's close to its launch time but here we are in Goa driving the car and seeing how really is it when it comes to the performance. I have with me Zach Hollis who's the brand director at Skoda India. Thank you Zach for talking to us and my pleasure and uh, bringing us here uh, to drive the car and really test how the car performs. First and foremost, uh, tell us about the car and the kind of response you've got so far since you started the bookings uh, for some time. Ha is there been, has there been a great reception? Are you happy with the way, uh, you know, people are lining up to buy this car? I am very happy with the way things are going. I, I, in fact, two weeks ago, I went and visited six dealers in Delhi, uh, talking to salespeople, teams, talking to, to customers to really understand and get their feedback. And people love the design of the car, the styling, they like the size of the car, and of course, the engines and gearbox combinations are already well loved in, in Kushak. So it's really outstanding we've got. We've got a lot of pre-bookings, and actually we took pre-bookings before people saw the car, and not one customer has cancelled now they've seen oh, the car. Okay, so this one. is really, really positive that mm -hmm. the car is actually meeting their expectations or actually surpassing their expectations. We have a fantastic, we have a gorgeous car, and I'm very confident we will achieve our targets with this car. Okay, you will achieve your targets you're confident with the way the peop, uh, you know you've got response on bookings nobody's cancelled it since the time you uh, showed the car I mean this was done before they had even seen the car as you said mm. right now the pricing has to be of course announced which is at a later part of, uh, of, of maybe early next month is ne what we understand. next week 28th we will announce the pricing of the 1 litre TSI and then the 3rd of March for the 1.5 yeah. okay sure so that's uh, the plan of, of how you will roll it roll this out but I want to understand from you this market and especially when you talk of the sedan space. Now a lot of it is being taken by SUVs and I know that uh, you yourself have seen a good run in the SUV space. How do you respond to questions that come up when people ask you why would you want to be in that space which is not really growing as much as an SUV and rather put and focus on that segment. I think this is a really good question and many people have asked this question. And you need to look back as to why is the sedan segment shrinking in the first place. And it's, it's not just because there is people's personal taste have changed and moved away from sedans to SUVs. It's actually down to the fact that there's nothing new for people mm. to look at. Nothing new has been launched in the sedan segment for, for, for some time. And, and as a result, the whole focus has been on SUVs. Lots of people have launched new SUVs, including ourselves, and we've been very successful already in the SUV segment. But we're bringing something back to sedans. We're again saying to people, take a look at sedans. We've got a gorgeous looking car here. It drives incredibly well. It's a big car. I mean, we've got 520 liters of, of boot space, which is a really big car. And I think this will bring some life back in the sedan segment. I can see this segment growing. And our long-term aim is to become segment leader. That's what we've set ourselves out to do. And I'm confident with this car will achieve the that. What's the timeline? That you're looking at to become the segment leader and the kind of numbers you're expected to do to start with and then eventually a stable number every month for this particular product. I think within six months I'm confident we can be segment leader. That's our target and that means we need to sell between two and a half and three thousand cars a month. Okay, so you, you're confident you'll get that yes. number. Yes. All right, so um, that's the point on the sales and the targets and the way the car has been received. Uh, when it comes to the product, and really here is the time when we can discuss and talk about what are the, some of the things that you think will really uh, make this car stand out, some things that you particularly feel Indian consumers will like, appreciate and uh, you know, uh, choose to buy uh, because it has those elements. Tell us the USP of this car. I think there's several things for me. There's not one USP, there's several things. I think firstly is down to style and design. When you look at the front of the car and you look at the way the creases of the car come in, it's actually a gorgeous looking car. And I think that's the first thing. And for me, sedans always look better than SUVs. They're well styled, they're lower, and they're kind of what we always think about. When we think of cars, we think of this sedan styling. Yes. And that's what we think about. Since we're probably a little children, yes. this is what we do and this is what we played with, etc., etc. I think that's the first thing. The second thing is we've got a big car. As I said, this, has, this is one of the longest cars in its segment. It's the widest car, it's the tallest car, and 520 litres of boot space means we've got a very big car. Thirdly is we've got SUV-like ground clearance. We have 179 millimetres of ground clearance, mm. which means this is not a compromise in India. In India where you've got rough or uneven roads, and also you've got regular speed bumps everywhere, this is not a compromise against an SUV. 179 millimetres of ground space is absolutely fantastic. And it doesn't look out of place. It doesn't look chunky, it doesn't look raised. It actually works really well with this, this high level of ground clearance. So I think for me, these are some of the important things. And then finally, TSI technology. We are giving customers 
TSIs at the same price as competitors' MPIs. I think this is a, a real great thing with, with, with the Slavia. The one liter TSI is an outstanding um, engine. It delivers great fuel efficiency, great power. You've driven the, it in Kushek, and I'm sure you'll get to experience that later on today in, in, in the Slavia. And then we've got the really powerful 1.5 TSI. Yes. 150 PS, 250 newton meters of torque is a real beast. And it's a really enthusiast car, and I think it will really attract the enthusiast drivers out there. And combined with the DSG gearbox, we've got something really incredible for the driving enthusiasts out there in India. And, and I'm really looking forward to getting some feedback also from you on that car. Yeah, sure. And what about the pricing? I think, will that be also an attractive one? I mean, we've seen you do it for your earlier cars, so can we expect the mm. same for Slavia too? We, we have got two target groups of, of audiences for this car. The majority of our volume, 85% of our volume, will come from the 1 litre TSI. The 1 litre TSI will be priced competitively against the marketplace. That's 100% clear. And we're bringing in features that aren't, aren't available on competitor cars, such as some of the safety features that are, that, that are in the cars. That's, sure. the, that's the first thing. The 1.5 TSI, there is no competition for that car. There's nothing out there. It just stands it out. It stands out on its own, 150 horsepower. And if you look at that power, it's actually the same power as the old Octavia RS 1.8 wow, turbo okay. that was brought into India. Yeah. So an incredibly powerful car, a lot of fun to drive, and there's no competition for that for that car in the marketplace. And that is strictly for enthusiasts. People really love for, in, to for enthusiasts. People who like to drive, drive, like to handle the car through the countryside, really enthusiasts car. But for most people, the 1 litre TSI is plenty of power and actually gives great mm -hmm. um, and you know, this whole strategy of the VW Group, how it's been positioned in India ever since uh, Škoda has become the lead uh, you know, company to uh, handle the entire group operations. Uh, and, and the way now you're looking at products, you know, the approach has been completely revamped and I think it is working uh, with the way people are now uh, looking at the cars and understanding that they, they really uh, are backed by great uh, value. Uh, that you're trying to bring in and of course the after sales element which was also something which was a concern earlier but I think being addressed very very closely. So this journey of, of the new version or a new avatar of the VW brand or the group in India, um, where do you see yourself go now? Are you happy with the way it's panned out so far and what are some of the areas and elements that you think are still work in progress which will take time and, and where do you see yourself? What is the vision and the roadmap for the group in India? let's say over the next three, four years? I think firstly, I'm responsible for the Skoda brand, as we know, in, in India. And I think what I'd like to say secondly is that the cars, the two, the, the cars we've got coming off the MQB Azeria Zero India platform look really different. They are differently styled for different target customers. I think that's really fantastic. The designers have done a fantastic job. And the good thing is that we are selling good levels of cars and also our sister brand are also selling good levels. So it's working from, from that point of view. It's definitely working. Our long-term aim as a brand is to sell one lakh of cars in India. That's my plan. And I plan to do that before 2025. Okay, one lakh cars before 2025. I love that lakh term as well. It's very <laughs> Indian and that's why we've set ourselves this time. Wonderful. So 100,000 if yes, we were to put it absolutely. that way. Absolutely. Uh, by 2025 or before that okay before that, yeah. all right I, lovely speaking with you all the very best what are the next launches coming are we seeing something in 22 calendar year 23 calendar year how many if you have to reach that number clearly you have to bring in more products i think i mean we've already launched in january we launched the kodiak which was very well received and we sold the whole allocation for this year within 21 yeah. days yeah. fantastic to do that not great for me because i would like to have sold more cars but you know i will we'll work to try and get more production if we can mm -hmm. later in the year but that that's always a challenge because of you know, as we said about semi semiconductors what, what we will continue to bring is new model derivatives so we'll look at look at more colors more trim lines more derivatives to continue to keep the models fresh this sure. is how we'll continue to drive the, the car forward and you might even see something in april on that one Mm -hmm. But absolutely new cars? Absolutely new cars, not with before 2025. We will continue, as I say, looking at derivatives, looking okay. at additional trim lines, colors, etc. etc. Okay, all right. Thank you very all much, right. Zach. My Lovely pleasure. Speaking Thank with you, you very Take much. Care. Thank yes. you.